Thank you, Acting Speaker. I rise to speak on this bill, which amends the Drugs, Poisons and Controlled Substances Act to allow for a trial of a medically supervised injecting centre for certain kinds of drugs of dependence at the North Richmond Community Health Centre. This is a conflicting piece of legislation for me. I understand the reasons behind setting up a trial site, but I also have concerns about the message this sends to the wider community. I understand the traders and residents in Richmond are concerned and have been confronted by some horrible situations over the past few years, but I'm not convinced um, the answer is this sort of centre in the format that's being proposed. I don't think it sends the right message to the, the community at all. The argument for this trial is based around the fact that there have been 34 deaths in the area surrounding the proposed site for the past 12 months and the number of Victorians overdosing has doubled in, since 2012. The North Richmond Community Centre uh, hands out 60,000 needles a month and has been described at the, as the epicentre of the heroin problem in Victoria. But I fail to see how this proposed proposal addresses why so many people are dying and particularly in the North Richmond area. Why is this the epicentre of the problem and what does this proposal do to solve that? In my view, it simply moves the problem behind closed doors. I'm reluctant again to speak about my experience as a nurse, but in this area I have a great deal of knowledge and experience because for 15 years I managed an Aboriginal community health centre and worked directly with patient care and unfortunately, Dealing with drug and alcohol addicted clients, this was a major part of that role. So I've spent many, many days uh, work, walking, walking patients through the journey of uh, rehab or looking for rehab beds. Um, but one thing I do know is that most of those people felt ashamed of their addiction. And if a facility like this was available, I'm not convinced they would want to use it. Um, evidence shows that 80% of the time, and certainly was what I saw, injecting drug users um, injected all sorts of locations. So uh, that was certainly what I uh, had my clients telling me. Um, so whilst it may stop fatal overdoses whilst in the centre, there's no guarantees that lives will be saved elsewhere when people inject when they're not at the centre. Um, it strikes me as interesting that we think someone will get up, get on a tram and head down to a safe place. It, it's What I saw was people just doing it when they had it available. But anyway, I think what works is when someone they trust and who believes in them walks them through the journey of withdrawal and rehab with them. A centre can provide that and it's about a service being resourced and the trust and support offered by the people working in that centre and their ability to form that trust with their client. So for me, it's about intensive support. That's what I saw working more than anything else. And you don't have to look for too far to see this type of support and care succeeding. People like Les Twentyman, who was a gentleman that I uh, had up to speak to our community one night. You know, people like that who are committed, really trying hard at a practical men um, level, have a huge rate of success. And more support is needed from um, people who are really committed like that. Um, so I doubt this centre would be able to deliver that by being an um, injecting centre. It's more about a wraparound centre. So in the Sydney experience, my research tells me that only 11% of injecting room clients were referred to maintenance, treatment, detox or rehab. 3.5% of clients were referred to detox and only 1% referred to rehab. So there's no evidence yet that the, from the Sydney experience that people have kicked their habit uh, in the long term. Um, it's also reported that none of the Sydney's major rehab services such as Odyssey House, Who's or the uh, Salvation Army have ever cited one of the referrals. You can make as many referrals as you want, but if the person you're referring to doesn't have the appropriate support and follow up on the referral uh, and someone to walk that withdrawal journey with them and help them with the rehab pathway, it simply won't work. I do hold concerns that this sends a message that we've given up and rather than try and stop people becoming addicted or assisting them through the intensive support to be properly rehabilitated, we are simply enabling people to continue to use drugs, albeit under the supervision and behind closed doors. In my electorate, we are not immune to drug problems and we face our own series of issues, mostly around the lack of appropriate rehab places and withdrawal treatment program, which isn't fully funded and only operates Monday to Friday and not on school holidays or public holidays. This is critically failing, a critical failing that must be addressed because you don't withdraw between nine and five. Um, you don't have public holidays off from withdrawal and you don't have school holidays off from withdrawing. It needs a 24-hour service because um, the demand is clearly there. 
There is also no locally based drug and alcohol rehabilitation bed in uh, South West Coast. Uh, the closest is over two hours away. So residential rehabilitation targets people with severe and long-standing alcohol and other drug uh, use problems who have tried other services but with limited success. It involves three uh, month stays, up to three months and sometimes longer, at a dedicated facility that provides a structured work-based program with supportive environments. Clients undergo dis detoxification before coming to the service so they're not chem chemically dependent on alcohol or other drugs. They engage in therapeutic counselling and have group and individual activities to develop personal and social skills that are so critically important in addressing alcohol and other drug use problems for a longer term approach. The wraparound services uh, model facilitates clients' engagement with other services with uh, variation according to their individual concerns. Clients may engage with primary and mental health care and they may utilise employment, education, welfare, family and other services to establish pathways that are integral to the eventual reintegration into the broader community. As we know, the further people have to travel from their home, the less likely they are to take up treatments. So in South West Coast, our community has come together to address the GAP service and have set about solving the problem by themselves as a community. The result is the Lookout Project, a planned 20 bed rehab facility in Warrnambool servicing the entire southwest region. A location has been identified, the community fundraising campaign has been going gung-ho and uh, to raise the capital costs to get this problem sorted ourselves. Last week we hit the half a million dollar mark in just a matter of weeks. I've spoken with the Minister who's here in the Chamber and I appreciate and thank him for listening to what um, I had to say and I hope the Far West is considered because we are ready. In South West Coast we've had the have the unique ability to claim an almost full suite of services of drug and alcohol treatment, including centralised um, hospital-based um, withdrawal. And our community want this. Letters of support are coming from everywhere. There is, a not in, there is no not in my backyard attitude that has emerged, just support. So we have um, an incredibly lucky situation where we have a good team of people with many years' experience. Um, and in that team, we've got doctors like Dr. Roger Bruff with over 30 years' experience in the uh, drug and alcohol area. Jeff Somer, who's run the uh, RAD Centre for 17 years in the region, I think. So whilst we've got these experienced people and the team under them, it's an opportunity for their skills and knowledge to be used to make sure we have uh, the education of the next generation. Learning from experts like this is invaluable uh, for new specialists, but we have a limited window and must act now. The lookout and fully funding Dr Bruff's withdrawal unit and fixing other issues must become a priority. The lookout is the community coming up with a solution to a community problem and I respectfully ask the Minister to consider funding uh, available the cover of the operation costs of the centre. Whilst I know there is support for this injecting room, I can't help but feel funding and the focus should be on strengthening other areas of addiction services to stop people becoming addicted in the first place and supporting those who are on the rehabilitation pathway. The workers in the field need resources to assist and the families beg us to help them. That was certainly my experience. And that's where our focus should be, supporting families and rehabilitation is, residential rehabilitation does this. I don't think injecting rooms do.